On 25th December 2021, the James Webb Space Telescope was finally launched into space. We know it as the most powerful telescope ever launched, and it was finally sent into outer orbit after spending $10 billion over the last 25 years. So the expectations from the JWST are astronomical, and based on the evidence so far, it seems like the telescope will live up to the hype. Even though the telescope will release its first full-color images and spectroscopic data on July 12th, it has already sent back some test images. These images show the telescope's unprecedented power and have already shocked the entire space industry. As soon as the Hubble telescope was launched into orbit, scientists knew that they would need much better technology to understand the origins of the universe. The Hubble was the first major observatory in outer space and vastly increased our understanding of the cosmos. However, scientists realized that the ever-expanding universe consisted of faraway galaxies that were out of the Hubble telescope's reach. Hubble was built to detect visible and ultraviolet light, and even though early galaxies do emit visible light, the expanding nature of the universe means that the wavelengths of this light is stretched into the infrared part of the electromagnetic spectrum. To resolve this problem, the James Webb Telescope is equipped with infrared detectors that will collect the faint light coming from the stars and galaxies formed only a few million years after the Big Bang. With Webb, we will be able to see cosmic bodies that are 10 million to 100 million times fainter. One of the first images sent back by the JWST was a selfie of the telescope itself, which made the NASA staff go, holy cow. The image showed Webb's primary mirror with all of its 18 segments collecting light from the same star. Even though the mirror segments were yet to be aligned at the time, the selfie showed that each segment of the primary mirror was working properly. This selfie taken was not captured by an externally mounted engineering camera, but with a specialized pupil imaging lens inside of the telescope's NERCAM instrument. The NERCAM is one of the four key instruments of the JWST and was configured only for engineering and alignment purposes. So the Webb team considered this a bonus image which gave engineers the assurance that NERCAM is successfully receiving light which is crucial for its ultimate goal of imaging objects in space. While the selfie was considered a bonus image, the first image of space from the JWST was of HD 844406, a sun-like star located approximately 241 light-years away in the constellation of Ursa Major. The image showed a mosaic of 18 stars spread over a black background, However, this was a trick image of HD 44406, which appeared in 18 places because the 18 segments of the James Webb Telescope were yet to be aligned at the time. Each of the mirror segments reflected the light back onto the NERCAM detector, creating 18 separate dots. This mosaic was a result of the Webb capturing 1,560 images over the course of 25 hours, although the observatory was able to find the star during the first six hours and using just 16 images. According to NASA, HD 44406 will be too bright to study once the JWST is in focus, but it was a perfect target to gather data and start Webb's alignment. After the 18-part image of the HD 844406, NASA started a procedure called fine phasing of the James Webb Telescope. At the end of the procedure, the telescope's primary mirror was moved into focus and directed at a singular star. On March 11th, the alignment was complete and the telescope sent back yet another stunning image of the star 2 mass J1755042 plus 6551277. By aligning the 18 distinct images, JWST achieved a better-than-expected precision of 50 nanometers. NASA believes that this precision will only get better with time as the telescope spends more time snapping images and reading the galaxies. The purpose of this image was to evaluate the alignment process of the web, which was successful as evident from the bright star at the center of the image. However, even more intriguing are the galaxies scattered across the background. Some of these galaxies are billions of light years away, far beyond the Milky Way. 
and viewing them was only made possible by moving beyond the optical wavelengths and observing in infrared instead. The latest test image from the James Webb Space Telescope came on the 9th of May, and it is the one that really shows how much better Webb is than its predecessors, including the Hubble Telescope and the Spitzer. The image released by NASA shows an intriguing view of a satellite galaxy of the Milky Way located more than 158,000 light-years away from Earth. Captured with JWST's coldest instrument MIRI, or Mid-Infrared Instrument, the image provides a sneak peek into the telescope's imaging performance. NASA released this latest photo side-by-side -side with an earlier close-up of the Magellanic Cloud taken by the Spitzer Space Telescope. Spitzer was the first space observatory to capture a high resolution of the universe using mid-infrared technology. However, the side-by-side -side images show that Webb, with the help of a larger primary mirror and much better infrared detectors, will allow us to see the distinct skies with improved clarity, enabling even more discoveries. The MIRI image shows the interstellar gas from the Megalanic Cloud in great detail. It shows the emissions from polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons that are essential to the thermal balance and chemistry of interstellar gas. These studies will come in handy when the JWST finally begins observing the universe and sends back details into the birth of ancient stars and galaxies. The James Webb Space Telescope is now in its last phase of commissioning, where it will calibrate all four of its scientific instruments and the fine guidance sensor. After extensive calibrations and characterizations of the instruments, the JWST will start its routine science mission from the 12th of July. The improvements in infrared imaging will help the telescope reach parts of the universe that remained obscured to the Hubble and the Spitzer. In its initial 10-year mission, Webb will study the solar system, directly image exoplanets, and photograph the first galaxies. However, the most intriguing part of its mission will be to study the atmospheres of exoplanets. Astronomers didn't know about the existence of planetary bodies outside of our solar system when the Hubble telescope was launched. The first exoplanet was discovered in 1992, and astronomers have since found out that they are very common in the universe. So, one major objective of the JWST would be to find planets orbiting in the habitable zone of their star making it possible for liquid water and perhaps even life to exist. One of the most interesting targets that JWST will study is a giant ring of dust and planetesimals orbiting a young star called HR 4796A. Astronomers have been studying this star and the ring of dust for the past two decades. It is believed that most planetary systems look very similar to the HR 4796A and its debris ring during the earlier stages of their formation. The debris disk around this young 8 million year old was likely created from collisions among developing planets near the star. Scientists will use the imaging from JWST's coronagraph to view the debris disk in different wavelengths, which will help us understand the formation of planetary systems in space. The examination of rocky exoplanets using previous space observatories proved to be more difficult than gas giants. That's because of the smaller relative brightness and smaller size of these planets next to a star. This will no longer be a problem with James Webb's powerful mirror and deep space location, and the first of these rocky planets it will observe is the 55 Cancer IE. 55 Cancer IE is classified as the first super-Earth because it is in orbit of a sun-like star 55 Cancer IA. The rocky planet is not habitable, but investigating it with the JWST could become the basis for future detailed studies of planets like our own. Scientists assume that the 55 Cancer IE is tidally locked to the sun, which means that its one side always faces its sun, raising the temperature on that side to 3,100 degrees Fahrenheit. These extreme conditions on the hot side may have caused its atmosphere to completely evaporate, which will now be confirmed by the James Webb Telescope. The Webb will also confirm the existence of a Jupiter-mass planet orbiting the young star Epsilon Eridani. 
The exoplanet's elliptical orbit takes it as close to Epsilon Eridani as Earth is from the Sun, and then takes it as far as Jupiter. Even though the planet is a gas giant and uninhabitable, one of its moons may have suitable conditions to sustain life. Located at a distance of 10.5 light-years from Earth, Epsilon Eridani Extrasolar System is one of our closest neighbors, and scientists believe it is a prime location to research how planets form around a sun like our own. The James Webb Space Telescope is mounted more than a million miles from Earth. So, its success is absolutely vital in the quest to uncover the deepest mysteries of the universe. The unprecedented power of the telescope means that it is difficult to predict what it can achieve. However, early test imagery has demonstrated the sharpness of Webb's infrared view and potential to take the first true images of atmospheres and planets beyond our solar system.